Good evening. Thank you. Thank you for remembering we start at 5 o'clock. So uh, I was a little worried about myself, but so all day I've been saying 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock. So I, you know, I'm, but fortunately, I, I, with the craft fair here and everything else, it was, uh, it was, we were able to uh, remember and we're here and we at 5 o'clock uh, worship now on Saturday night. So remind everybody who, uh, who may forget that this is that. Uh, we uh, begin our worship service with confession and forgiveness. You can find that on page 94 in the re- front of the red hymnal as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. So we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll now take a few moments of silence to confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, to where we have given love and to where we have received the love of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. And as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of that sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our opening uh, hymn is in the back of the red hymnal, number 805, Lead On, O King Eternal. Almighty and ever-living God, 
You anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And at this time, we will now have readings from Scripture. The first reading is from Psalm 93, beginning at the first verse. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Karen. The Holy Gospel this evening comes from St. John in the 18th chapter. John writes Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But as it is, my kingdom isn't from here. And Pilate asked him, so you're a king? And Jesus answered, well, you say that I'm a king, but for this I was born, for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth, and everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice, the gospel of the Lord. So back in the days when I was much, much younger, I had a friend who lived in El Paso, Texas, and I went to visit his family for a weekend, and while we were there, he had some family that also lived in Juarez across the river, and so we went to visit them on one Friday night that lasted almost two years. And eventually, late, late in the evening, we found ourselves needing to make our way back uh, to El Paso, and we were hopelessly lost in the middle of Juarez. And as we were walking down a street, we could see a block to the north, the major thoroughfare that we needed to get to, but we couldn't find a way to get from our street to that street. It was a hot, ridiculously hot night, 100 degrees easy, and with all the people thousands of people that live in Juarez. It was just miserably sticky and gross. And as we were walking through one, there was this like Quonset hut. And, and, the, and the doors were open. And I, as I looked, as I walked through the door, I could see if I looked straight down the, the aisle, like just like it was here at, in our church, through the, the, the doors that were open on the other side, I could see the other street. And so I said to my friend, I said, well, let's just cut through this building. And so we went into this Quonset hut, and you've all been in them, you've seen, you know, they are, you know, and it's got an, it's just like our, our church here. There were all kinds of, there was neatly divided in half, and there were all these, these uh, drapes and, and curtains that were hanging there, that were hung, and making little cubicles in these, these curtains. 
And we got about three steps into the door, and this massive man stopped us and said, can I help you? And I said, well, kind of weird. I just want to walk through your building and get to the other side. I want to get out into that street. And he said, oh, okay, I'll escort you. So as my friend and I are walking behind this guy down this center aisle, one of the, one of the curtains is pulled back, and I look in, and in it is a small little bed, a little washstand. And I realize about halfway through that I'm standing in the middle of a bordello. And so as I look into that room and see the accoutrement of that particular establishment, I look and there, sort of pinned up on one of the drapes, is a crucifix. About this big, with, with, a, with a big, big brass cross with Jesus hanging on it. And I see that and I, I laugh. And the bouncer looks at me and he says, Money? And I said, Well, I didn't expect to see a crucifix here. And the guy looked at me and he said, Who needs Jesus more than a whore? So I got back out onto the street. And as I made my way back to El Paso and from El Paso back to Texas, to Chicago, to Minnesota, to North Dakota, to Omaha, to Blair, I have been haunted for 35 years by that image and that story. And I've met a lot of people over those last 35 years since my tour through that establishment. And I still don't know if I've met anyone who was more needing of Jesus than the women in that place. I've met a lot of desperate people who are at least as equal to them, but I wonder. And when I see Jesus talking to Pilate, and they're arguing about a kingdom. And Jesus says, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. I realize that what Jesus offers is the king of the world. And this is the last Sunday of the church year. For the last 90-some years, ever since, uh, ever since uh, after World War I, when Christ the King Sunday came into existence. We've been trying to highlight what it means to have Jesus as your, as your ruler, as your king, as your guide, as, as someone who, who can help you. And it seems to me that what Pilate missed in this conversation with Jesus is what a lot of us miss when we place things other than Jesus as the ruler of our lives. We miss the truth. Because, you see, for Pilate, who by all accounts is one of the most vindictive governors and rulers that Rome ever produced, full of retribution, vindication, revenge, death. This was how Pilate operated. If he didn't like you, he waited until you were vulnerable, and then he killed you. But Jesus says, if you hear the truth and listen to my voice, you're going to be there. You're going to belong with me. And I wonder here in 2021, can you hear the truth? Can you hear through the cacophony of noise that's being produced on an almost second-by-second -second basis through the Internet and through our friends and through our conversations? Can you hear through the noise? Can you hear the truth? Are you so caught up by all the glitz and the glamour, by all the stuff that seems to just overwhelm us and come at us, that the truth skirts over the top of your head or passes by with barely a glance? That truth that will set you free. 
free from being entrapped and enslaved by emotions that want to have revenge or arrogance or greed. Freed from fears that hide us from revealing our true selves and our true nature. Freed from the things that keep us from expanding and reaching out to create new relationships of love and trust and mercy because we don't understand or because someone looks different or votes different. Can you hear the truth? The truth that some unnamed prostitute in Juarez, Mexico was able to place above her bed. That you are loved beyond your wildest imagination and that your sins are forgiven and you are free. Do you hear it? Jesus is speaking it. Saying it loudly all across this globe. Throughout the very universe itself. But can you hear that you're loved? Can you hear that you're free? It is. It is difficult. And you don't even have to be Scott Frost to have that kind of difficulty. But it's there. It's there in a drizzle of water from your shower. It's there in a sip of grape juice from a plastic cup. It's there in the handshake of a friend you haven't seen in a while. It's there when you see the text from a friend who needs your help. The truth is out there. It's there. But can you hear it? Pilate couldn't. Pilate couldn't hear words of forgiveness, words of love, words of mercy, words of hope. He was a cynical governor, politician from Rome, bent on killing to get his way. Maybe you know some people that are struggling to hear it now. Maybe you're struggling to hear it. But it's there. So this Christ the King Sunday, this weekend, as you think about where we've been, where we go. Admittedly, it was difficult to hear in COVID all the stuff that was going on. I mean, it seems like it should be worse, but it really isn't. As I told you a couple weeks ago, from my perspective, it pretty much looks the same as it did in 2019, just a few less of our friends around because we've had to bury so many people. But by and large, First Lutheran Church is where we were two years ago, give or take a few friends. It doesn't seem like that. It seems like it's less. It seems like there's a diminishment. We're, we're so busy hearing all the negative stuff that we don't, we don't see any of the positive. We don't see 60 kids trying to make a difference in their lives by coming to confirmation. We don't see 50 kids downstairs in a basement learning the stories of the Bible. We don't see the incredible staff that I get to work with, nine people that are so incredibly impressive that I can't even believe I'm lucky enough to work with them. By the way, don't, don't tell them that I'm the weak link. It's amazing. And I get to see you. Those of you who have toughed it out over the last 20 months, found a way to continue to activate your faith, whether it was a Zoom meeting or class or you come here in a mask or back in the days when we had to socially distance and our reopening committee was wiping down chairs. <laughs> Seems like a decade ago. I mean, six months ago, 
the vice president's husband was here in this building. And if I don't say that periodically, I, I forget. Because those last six months have been so much filled with stuff that I've never seen before. That meeting him just seems like one more thing I do. So I have to listen. I have to take time to hear the truth. And it comes out in a grandson who says, Hi, Papa. In colleagues who say, Good morning. In friends who ask how it's going. In people who open their hearts and their wallets and everything else to make First Lutheran Church a shining beacon of God's grace and hope in a world filled with noise and despair, hatred, violence. It is indeed a difficult thing to hear. But like Jesus said, if my kingdom was of this world, my followers would be fighting tooth and nail. But the truth I speak is much quieter, is much softer. The truth I speak is that you are loved and you are forgiven. And you are free. And Jesus of Nazareth will do everything in his power to make it not only true for you, but for all of us. Amen. Our hymn of the day. this season of Pentecost on On Christ the King Sunday, we tell the story of God's love using the Apostles' Creed, which you can find on page 105 in the front of the red hymnal. The Apostles' Creed tells the story of God's love from the beginning of time through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and into the life of the Spirit in which we all share. 
And we're going to switch next week into saying the Nicene Creed on page 104. So appreciate the brevity as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for your church and for everyone who is in need. I'll end each petition. God, in your mercy, you may respond together. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for all the preachers, for Bishop Brian and Bishop Linda, for our missionaries, evangelists, and all teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Teach us to live in your truth. Give us the humility and wisdom to make just decisions that benefit all. God, in your mercy, Lord God, you sent your son Jesus to love in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join us in worship in person, for all who are sick and suffering. Let us take a few moments of silence to remember all of those who bring a need before God into their lives on this day. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy. And Holy Spirit, you sent the Son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Tonight we especially remember Lorraine Hanson, Arlen Gross, Dick Veracruz, Kenneth Wilson, Kurt Peterson, Don Anderson, Darvid Quist, Pat Hunchy, John Tess, and all those whom we name in our heart. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy. And God, our hope and strength, we entrust you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. This time, the offering uh, is not yet being brought forward, but it is being received, uh, and we uh, appreciate all the generous gifts and donations to not only here at First Lutheran Church, but all the ministries uh, that are being supported, especially ELCA World Hunger at this time. So in honor of those gifts and donations, let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion. Let us pray. Gracious God, we remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. 
and that after supper he took the cup, blessed it, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. For as often as we eat from this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. And so let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Once again this evening, Holy Communion will be distributed out to you. And we invite you then to take the celebration cup and to peel back the top layer for the uh, wafer and the second piece of foil for the grape juice. And then also note that uh, Judy will be leading us in hymn number 167, and you can join in on that at any time. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Now may the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have just a couple of announcements here uh, before we begin. First off, the craft fair was here today, and lots of folks were around. I see there's still some baked goods left, which 
which it can only mean that my brother didn't show up. But uh, there we are. There's still some stuff there. And, and I invite you to continue to uh, keep all those folks who helped organize that and give thanks uh, for their work and their efforts uh, over the last uh, few months as they've been planning that and getting that back going after a year, uh, year off for that. Um, and then also note that our children are going to be presenting a Christmas program on Sunday, December 19th at 10.15 a.m. And you're all invited to come watch uh, that. That, too, has been uh, on, in a, had a year off. It's going to be over in the Life Center at 10.15 a.m. on Sunday, December 19th. And about does it for announcements for this week. Have a happy and blessed uh, Thanksgiving. I hope your travels are safe. And I invite you now to receive the benediction. And as we go out into this week, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord's holy countenance smile down upon us all and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our closing song is number 439. One other announcement I forgot, the Larson girls are out here selling holiday greenery. This is your absolute last chance if you haven't got a wreath or a swag or a centerpiece to get some uh, greenery for our youth and their ministries. But have a great week. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.